Uh, we're going to go very briefly to the Word of God. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, in the 17th verse. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, in the 17th verse. It's a very familiar verse there, but we're going to read um, some verses beyond that. If you have it, say amen. Elder Corey is reading in our hearing. Therefore, if any man be in Christ. Uh huh, you know this. You've memorized it, you've said it before. If any man be in Christ. Uh huh. He is a new creature. He is a new creature. Uh huh. Old things are passed away. Uh huh. Behold, all things are become new. Read. And all things are of God. Notice what he says. Sometimes we stop at the 17th verse. But he says all things that are new now. He says all things are what? Of God. They're of God. Uh-huh. Who hath reconciled us. Now notice this. Now he has reconciled us. He has brought us back again to him. Uh-huh. To himself by uh, Jesus By Christ. Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh-huh. And hath given to us the ministry. Now not only did he reconcile us, but he has also given you and I, not just the preacher, not just the missionary. Not just the, what we call ordained a few weeks ago. No, but he's given each of us what? The ministry of reconciliation. Thank you. Read. To wit, uh -huh. God was in Christ. So he's saying that God was in Christ. Doing what? Reconciling the world unto uh -huh. himself. Why? Because, the, because they were lost. They were once with him, but they were lost. Uh huh. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Uh huh. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So he did not count their sins against them, or you, or me. But he took what we deserved and put it on his own son and brought us through his son back to himself. Amen. Say amen. amen. Now then, uh-huh. We are ambassadors for Christ. So because of that, we then are ambassadors. We're representatives. We represent him. Uh-huh. As though God did beseech you uh, by us. Uh-huh. We pray you in Christ's stead. We pray you. We beg of you. We plead with you in Christ's stead. What? Be ye reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. Just say that with me. Be ye reconciled. Some may feel like they don't have a need for reconciliation. But I'm here today to show you and the scripture to reveal unto you through the word of God that you and I all need reconciliation. You could have left a place and not know it. When I was in college, they had a uh, saying in the classroom, and it was, be here now. Because the professors recognize that you can be sitting there but you're really not there. Amen. Some of y'all sitting here right now. Your physical body is here. But you are somewhere else. So it's not enough to be physically present in the church house. But it's to be where he is. It's to have the mind of Christ. It's to be with him. And so what he's doing, because, he, you know, he, Jesus, even on one occasion said, you know, you, you, you speak to me from your lips, but your heart is far apart, far off, far from me. So the reconciliation is not necessarily how you're thinking. But it's, it's that place that we've left. It's that place that we departed from. And in Genesis, the third chapter. In Genesis, the fourth chapter, there are two accounts. In Genesis, the third chapter and the 
uh, second, 23rd verse, and then Genesis, the fourth chapter, and the 13th verse. I want you to take note of these verses because uh, there's something there that we need to recognize. Uh, this was after sin had entered in uh, through Adam in the garden. In the Genesis 3 and 23, it says, Therefore the Lord God sent him. Now notice this. The Lord God sent him forth from the garden to till the ground from whence he was taken. You have that, Elder Corey? Let's pick it up there. So he drove out the man. Notice this. So he drove out the man. He kicked him out. He said, you can no longer stay here. Uh-huh. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden. Uh-huh. So he placed at the end of the garden cherubims in what? And a flaming sword. Uh-huh. Which turned every way. Uh-huh. To keep the way of the truth. See, sometimes we think that we can just come to God any kind of way. We, we, we think we can live any kind of way and, and just go in and out. Just, just right there in the garden and then come out and do what we want. No, he said, not only am I kicking you out, but I have a flaming sword to keep you out. You won't be coming back here. Not only did that happen to Adam, but if you go down to Genesis, the fourth chapter, and I'm moving swiftly in the 13th verse, after Cain had murdered his own brother, Genesis 4 and 13, what does it say? said unto the Lord, uh -huh. my punishment is greater. Now notice what he says after, after, after the Lord appears to him and says, he says, where is your brother? His blood crieth out to me. And he responded by saying, am I my brother's keeper? So the Lord told him, you're going to be a vagabond. You're going to be a fugitive. So what does he say? My punishment is greater than I can bear. So after the Lord told him that he was going to kick him out, because that's what a fugitive is. That's what a vagabond is. He says, my punishment is more than I can bear. Read. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day. Now he told him the same thing he told his father. He drove him out. Of the place that he had inhabited. He drove Adam and Eve out of the place that they inhabited. Uh-huh. Driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Okay. And from thy face shall I be healed. All right. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me uh -huh. shall slay me. Shall slay me. Listen to this. It's one thing to leave a place. It's one thing to say that this is not for me. It's, it's one thing to walk out on your own. It's one thing for you to make the decision to exit from your own will. But it's another thing. Everybody say another thing. It's another thing when you are told you have to go. It's another thing when, when you are told you cannot stay here. It's different when you are escorted to the door. Uh -huh. It affects you different when you are evicted. Oh, yeah, you said, I ain't going to sign that lease again. And you left on your own. No, this time you are evicted. Get your stuff. Put it out on the front lawn. You have until noon to be out. So what do you do when you're told to go? You don't have no other choice but to, but to go. So not only, not only, I have news for you on today. Not only was Adam and Eve evicted. Not only was Cain evicted. But all throughout the scripture. You, you read it all throughout the scripture. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 30th chapter. And I, I promise you I won't be long on today. The Lord has met us here. But I do want you to understand uh, what he would have us to know. Amen. From these verses. Amen. 
Deuteronomy 30. For most people, notice this. For most people, uh, when, when, when you are told to go, you settle within yourself that you will never come back. You never come back even if the owner changes their mind. You know why? Because we, we have within ourselves, we have a way of, 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 of not thinking of what we did, but what was done to us. Let me say that again, because I lost this side. Uh -huh. we, we have a way, we have a way of forgetting of what we did. See, see when, when Adam and Eve sinned, it wasn't the sin that came to mind. All they could think about was, he kicked us out. The question is, why were you kicked out? That's, that's how we do. We, we, play, we, we put it on somebody else. When, 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 when Cain was kicked out, when the Lord said, you're going to be a fugitive. You know what? He said, my punishment is more than I can bear. You know why he said that? He was thinking more about what was done to him than what he did to his brother. And that's the problem with humankind. That's what happens to us. That's, that, that, we, 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 we tend to ignore who we are, what we've done. And so what we do then, we say, I ain't going back. As if you were invited back. But what's amazing about the scripture is that all throughout the scripture, God never just, just put us out to leave us there. But in his mercy, everybody say in his mercy. He gave us all a chance to be reconciled. He could have left us. But all the time in Genesis 3 and 15, he, it was always in his plan that there would be a way of reconciliation. Let's read Deuteronomy 30 if you have that. Uh -huh, it reads as what? And it's, no, go ahead. And it mm -hmm. shall come to pass uh -huh. when all these things are come upon thee. Uh -huh. The blessing and the curse. Yes. Which I have set before thee. All right. And thou shalt call them to mind uh, among all the nations. Among all the nations, uh huh. Whither the Lord God hath driven thee. Notice this. Whither the Lord God has driven thee. So it didn't stop with Adam and Eve, and it didn't stop with Cain, but all throughout. The Lord was driving his people out of the place that he had prepared for them. Don't leave me. I'm going somewhere. So, so he tells them, he says, I've placed before you a blessing and a curse. But, but it's amazing that in each of these passages where we read where God has driven his people out, he always comes back with a way for you to get back in. Not on your own accord but through obedience to him. Read, uh-huh. And shall return unto the Lord thy God. So he gives us an opportunity to return unto who? The Lord thy God. Uh-huh. And shall obey his voice. If you will obey his voice, uh-huh. According to all that I command thee this day. Yes. Thou and thy children. Uh-huh. With all thine heart. Uh-huh. With all thy soul. Uh-huh. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. He will turn. The very thing that has been against you, against us. He said, I will, to, even though I drove you out. Now, he didn't have to do that. But he said, I will turn your captivity. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I will have compassion. Nobody but God could think of us in that way. Uh-huh. Read. And will return. And gather thee from all the nations. Yes, uh-huh. The Lord thy God have scattered thee. Uh-huh. If any of thine be driven out uh -huh. unto the outermost parts of heaven. All right. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. Uh-huh. And from thence will he fetch thee. Notice that. He's going to come and get you. That's how concerned he is about us. So, so he doesn't come to get us just for us to remain where we are. But he says, what, when I came to get you, I want you to go get someone else. Come on, just say with me, be ye reconciled. It's amazing that Cain would use 
uh, the expression of fugitive as he heard the Lord say it to him. He says, I shall be a fugitive and vagabond in the earth. The word vagabond means to wander. It means that you are just moving from here to there to there. You're fleeing. You're running from something. Yeah, a fugitive is always looking behind them to see if somebody going to catch up with them. They're going anywhere because why? They don't have a home. A vagabond, a vagabond is unsettled. They don't have a foundation. They don't have a purpose or even a direction. They're continuously searching for peace and understanding. They're even looking for validation because there's a gap now. There's a gap now. There's a void now. There's a vacuum now. There's an emptiness that they're trying to fill. And I want you to know that we are living in that season of fugitives. Everywhere you look now, there's fugitives. Everywhere you look now, there's vagabonds. Everywhere you look, there's, 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 there's people wandering. Not only are they, they physically going from place to place, but they're even wandering in their mind because they don't have the peace of God anymore that they once possibly had. I want you to know on today that we, like Adam and Eve and Cain and even the children of Israel, the Lord has driven us out. Amen. There's many of us that don't have a home. Because we left that place. We left that, that, that season where we had sweet fellowship and communion. We left that, 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 that home. We left that opportunity. And, and so, so because we've been driven out, not only the church has been driven out, but everybody has been driven out. And, and I, I, I've come to, to recognize the behavior of humanity in this season. Everybody is looking for a place to call home. Even though they're restricted to the home. They're, 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 they, they're, they're unsettled. They don't have nothing to sustain them. No, no, no settlement. No, no establishment. Wondering where, where, where can I go? After they have purchased all they can on Amazon Prime, after they've went to Walmart as many times as they could possibly go, after they've done all the home improvement projects that they can possibly do, there's still a void. There's still an emptiness. They've racked up all the rewards and points. They've eaten out at every possible restaurant. Fugitives wandering and so what God he gives us an opportunity to come back home I'm I'm here to tell the saints here I'm here to let those who are logged in by social media just say this with me come back home you know why because because just like Adam and Eve Adam and Eve couldn't go back Cain couldn't go back but he's given us an opportunity and some people in, in, with, have the audacity, Mother Rigsby, to say, I ain't going back. But I, I, I want to share with you the ministry of reconciliation on today. Because he says, he says in that verse, I'm going to read it again, um, the third verse of Deuteronomy 30. He says that the Lord will turn thy captivity. And he will have compassion on thee. And notice, he says, he will return and gather thee. If, if you read the scripture again, there is cycles of scattering and gathering. Amen. The scattering occurs for a number of reasons. Number one is because of disobedience. But in Acts, uh, in several chapters in the book of Acts, he scattered the people. So that his church would grow. Because they had become too comfortable. You have to know why am I being scattered. 
But then you also have to know, is this a time for gathering? And I'm telling you, God is calling his people back to a place of gathering. Because they've been driven out. You've been told. I, we, 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 we won't be having church today. Oh, you said, well, no, you can't come in here. Where's your mask? I don't have to wear a mask. Okay, go home. You know why? We were driven out. And so when we, when we left, some people said, I will never go back. And God has given us a window. He's given us a time. He's given us space during a season like this. And he says, I have the ministry of reconciliation. Imagine now, you've heard the stories on the news. It is not foreign to us. But imagine taking a trip on an airplane and leaving Colorado Springs and, and going uh, to Baltimore. And so you, you board the flight and and somewhere uh, mid-flight, uh, someone's behavior uh, turns for the worse. So the flight attendant uh, tells the captain, we got a problem in seat 13A. This person is being very uh, volatile and they're not cooperating. So the captain gets on the loudspeaker and the captain says, uh, whoever's in 13A, I need you to get your act together or else we're going to have an emergency landing. So the individual in 13A continues to misbehave. The individual in 13A just becomes erratic and just uncontrollable. So the captain makes an emergency landing. The captain stops in Dallas, Texas. And he calls the marshals and says, whoever's in 13A, you won't continue on this flight. I am kicking you off of this plane. It's amazing. It's amazing how we are mid-flight. And some of us have misbehaved. And God said, I'm not going any further. We're making an emergency landing in 2020. We're making an emergency landing in 2021. And we don't know how long we're going to be here, but we're not going to our destination till I drive you out. We're not going any further. You have to get off this plane because you cannot violate my holiness. You cannot, you cannot play with who I am. I'm God. There is none beside me. There is none to be compared with me. I'm the captain. Who is you to think that you're going to misbehave on the flight that I'm in charge of? So I'm going to leave you here in Dallas. Now, what's amazing about it is that that individual now has to figure out how am I going to get to Baltimore? It's amazing now. They are really listed as a fugitive they can't get on no other flights no they've been blacklisted no no we got you John Doe you cannot buy another ticket there ain't no way so 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 now the person that was in in 13a has to got to figure out how am I going to get to my destination that's right that's right am I going to walk can I catch a train do I have to get an, an automobile because I can't go back the way that I was going. But the captain waits. Instead of immediately boarding flight and, and continuing on to Baltimore, he waits. And he gives that person a chance to think about what they did. He gives that person an opportunity to consider their ways. And even though they've been kicked off the plane, the captain is still there waiting because the captain is merciful. The captain is there and said, you know what? I'm going to give him another chance. But the only way they're going to get back on this ship 
on this plane, on this flight, is they have to repent. The only way they're going to be able to get back on here and go to Baltimore is they have got to acknowledge it was me. I'm the one responsible. So it's a waiting game. But the thing about it is there is a time that the, that, that the captain has got to make it to Baltimore. And if, if that person that's in 13A continues to wait, the captain's going to leave without them. That flight is boarding. I'm telling you right now, the flight to Baltimore is boarding. And if you want to get back to where you belong, you're going to have to be reconciled. The amazing thing about how we do, the amazing thing about if you study Cain, if you study Adam and Eve, is, is, is we have a pride about ourselves. Well, I ain't got to go. I'll do this on my own. And you always fall short of what God intended for you to be. You always fall short of where you were supposed to be. You never, ever. I know there's many persons that want to uh, attack the theology here, but there's only one way. There's only one way. You, 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 you trying to get in the back door. You, you trying to make it on your own. And I'm telling you, there's really only one way. The only way you're going to get to where you're supposed to be is you have to come in at the door. No, you ain't going to hijack this plane. No, you, if you're going to go to where I have called you to go, it's going to be through reconciliation. So what God has done, what God has prepared, what God has made a way is that when we were driven out, when, when, when we didn't have an opportunity, go with me to, to Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter, in the, in the 37th verse, I believe it is. Jeremiah 32 and 37. See, there, there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for us to come to ourselves. See, when, when, when Jesus had expressed uh, to the, the, the crowd that had gathered around him, after he started saying certain things about who he was and, and what he had come here to do, the scripture says many left him. But you know what Peter said? You heard this before. I've said it before. You know what Peter said? Peter said, where are we going to go? You have to come to a point in your life where you realize I ain't got nowhere to go. Where am I going to go? I can't go anywhere anyway. So Peter says, while well, you're getting Jeremiah, I haven't lost my place. But, but Peter answered him in, in John 6 chapter in the 67, 68 verse. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? He said, thou has the words of eternal life. And he said, and we believe. And we are sure that you are the Christ. The son of the living God. You have to be persuaded. See, you can tell somebody, you can preach to them all day. Your sons, your daughters, your, your family members. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. Yeah, they know. I knew. I was just stubborn. And I wanted to do it my way. But what I didn't realize is that things start heating up in my life. See, I thought things were going to stay the same. But stuff started happening. I'm like, Where'd that, what happened there? Oh, wait a minute. Where'd that come from? See, you don't know that your time is winding up. So God has given us the opportunity in such a window. As Peter was convinced, he said, you are the Christ. People can say what they want. I'm convinced that he is the Christ. I'm convinced that he's the son of the living God. I'm convinced that he has the words of eternal life. I'm convinced that he is the way. Everybody help me. I'm convinced that he's the, and I'm convinced that he's the, and I know that no man can come to the father but by him. I know that neither is there any name given among men where I can, you can, we all can be. 
So I found out in this short life that I don't have nobody but him. And I'm so thankful that he was merciful enough. I'm so glad that he didn't leave me when, when that bullet could have hit me. I'm so glad that he had mercy when I was running away. I'm so glad that he didn't give up on me. But he said, he said, be ye reconciled. He said, be ye reconciled. Who, who has Jeremiah? Third. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. Now notice this. So, so, so we're in a season now. We're, we're in a place now where, where persons are scattered. Uh huh. They're, they're, they're here, there, and everywhere. And, 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 and part of the reason is because they were driven out. The Lord drove them out because he said, you ain't going to do me any kind of way. But he didn't leave it there. He said, read that again. He said, what? I will gather them out of all But countries. I'm going to gather you. Yo, you've been scattered, but now I'm going to bring you back. And I'm going to bring you back because this is, this is your only hope. I'm going to bring you back from where? Whither I have driven them in my anger. Wherever I drove you. I'm going to bring you back because I drove you there in my anger. Uh-huh. And in my fury. And in my fury and what? And in great wrath. And in great wrath I did it. And what? And I will bring them again unto this place. So I'm going to bring you again. God has given us an opportunity again to bring us again to this place. Uh-huh. And I will cause them to dwell safely. Yes. And they shall be my people, uh -huh. and I will be their God. And I will be their God. And what? I'm going to give them one heart uh -huh. and, and one way. Notice this. Notice what he says. I'm going to give them one heart, but I'm also only going to give them what? One way. One way. Uh-huh. That they may fear me forever. Because I want them to know that if you violate this again, it may not happen like this again. You got one way. And I am the way. Uh-huh. For the good of them. For the good of them, yes. And of their children after them. So not only you, but I have your children in mind. Your disobedience is going to affect your children, their children, and their children. Uh-huh. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Uh-huh. That I will not turn away from them. Uh -huh. To do them good. All right. But I will put my fear in their hearts. Yes. That they shall not depart from me. That they will not depart from me. After this season, we should have that fear in our hearts. See, when the, the scripture, when, 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 when Noah and his family got off the ark, the scripture says that there was a fear. See, we don't have that fear. That we once had. That reverence. That even the unsaved. Wouldn't do certain things. But now that fear doesn't exist. So, so because God hasn't changed. He, he's putting the fear back in. To mankind. To remind us that he's God. And he does what he wants. Let's read on. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. Uh huh. And, and will plant them in this land assuredly uh -huh. with my whole heart mm -hmm. and with my whole soul. Uh huh. But I say of the Lord. Now notice what he says. He says, What? Like as I've what? Have brought all this great evil upon the people. Now, because I've allowed this evil to happen upon all of these people, he says, What? So will I bring upon them all the good. So I will also allow good. Uh-huh. That I have promised them. That I have promised them. I told you some time ago that the promises of God, they're still in effect. Oh, his, he, he hasn't forgotten his promise. But we had to stop over in Dallas because of bad behavior. The promise is still waiting on us. But before we can get to that place, and I'm almost done. Before we can get to that place, we, we have to be reconciled. 
and all, it's not always just vertical. Sometimes we need to be reconciled with one another. Sometimes before we can get to where we're trying to go, God is saying, I want you to deal with this. You keep running away from this. Be ye reconciled not only to me, but with your brother. That, that, that's in uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter. Yeah, yeah, read that real quick. Matthew 5, Matthew 5 and, and 24. Matthew 5 and Leave there thy gift before the altar. Notice this. Notice what he says. No, no, no. Let's start at the 22nd verse. But I say unto you. That whosoever is angry with his brother. Uh -huh. Without a cause. Uh -huh. Shall be in danger of the judgment. Uh -huh. And whosoever shall say to his brother. Uh -huh. Raka uh -huh. shall be in danger of the council. Uh -huh. But whosoever shall say thou fool. Mm -hmm. shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar. Notice, now if you come before God, but you have an aunt against your brother, your sister, your mother, your children. He says, leave. Now don't come up in here. That's why I drove you out. No, no. Leave your gift at the altar. Uh-huh. And go thy way. And go your way. Your, whatever your way is. And what? First be reconciled. Notice this. He says, first be reconciled to who? Thy brother. To your brother. Now, this is why some of us can't praise God. This is why when, when the Lord uh, has his way in our midst, there's some of us that just stone face. No, we can't because we, we're carrying something we shouldn't. We're not free. We're heavy. We're, we're burdened. We're just weighed down. Some of us can't be healed for that very same reason. So he says, leave your gift at the altar and be reconciled to your brother. Uh-huh. And then come and offer thy gift. And then come back. Don't try to praise and worship me with all that stuff in your heart. Be ye reconciled. He says, because as I have forgiven you, as I have come to you, as I have made a way from you, now I've given you the ministry of reconciliation to extend the same thing that I extended to you. Is there more to that? Agree with thine adversary quickly. So agree with thine adversary, uh-huh. While thou art in the way with him, uh-huh. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, uh-huh. And the judge deliver thee to the officer, uh-huh. And thou be in prison. Do it while you can. Do it while you can. I'm moving. My time is up. Let's go to Ephesians, the second chapter in the 14th verse. And we're going to close out. It says, for he is our peace. Those of you who have lost your peace. What we often do is we, 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 when we lose our peace with God, we pick up a peace. That's right. That's, that's the natural response when we leave God out. Then we fight with our hands. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're what? Mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Mm-hmm. So, so this verse says, he is our peace. You have to keep your peace. Not only with God, but with your brother and your sister. And when you keep your peace, listen, you, 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 you have an abundant and a fruitful life. But in each one of those scenarios with Adam and Eve and, and with, especially with Cain and, and with, with uh, the children of Israel, when they were driven out, they had did something that caused them to lose their peace. So this verse says, he is our peace who have made what? Both one. Now notice this. He took this side and he took this side and he laid himself down between. 
and he made both one. So the gap, the void, the emptiness, the vacuum that was there, he said, I've come to fill that place. And I took the two pieces that were severed. I took the two pieces that could not come together and I made both what? One. Read. And have broken down the middle wall. And I have taken that wall that was between us and God. That those swords that, 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 that are outside the, the Garden of Eden. Jesus then said, I have now taken down the middle partition. And what? Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. So he took upon himself, within his own self, he took the enmity. He abolished it within himself. Uh huh. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Uh huh. For to make in himself a twain. Uh huh. One new man. One new man. So making peace. So making peace. This is where we pick up in Second Corinthians. He says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ." So he's saying that if you're in Christ, he took what has separated us from God and he brought us together. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's new. And he said, all, everything old about you, he said, it's all passed away. And he said, behold, all things are become new. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a hand of praise right there. Let's continue, and I'm going to be finished. And, he, and that he might what? Be reconciled uh -huh. both unto God uh -huh. and one body. And one body by the what? The cross. By the cross, having done what? Slain the enmity thereby. You know what enmity is? Enmity is deep-rooted hatred. Enmity is deep-rooted hatred. It, in other words, that there, there's nothing in our flesh that desires to go after God because our flesh has enmity in it against God. The only way this flesh is going to come into subjection is that it has to suffer. It has to be crucified. So, so the deep-rooted hatred that was between mankind and God, which caused him to drive them out, Jesus took upon himself, and he reconciled the two, and they became one. Read. And came and preached peace to you. And so then he came and preached peace. Uh-huh. Which were afar off, and Be to them that were not. Because we were afar off. Because we were far off. Let, let, me, let me close with this. I, I, I got to close right here. But, but let me share with you that, that Jacob, uh, he had uh, departed from the place that he was supposed to be in. And if you remember his story, the scripture says that, that he labored. You remember he wanted Rachel? You remember that? And so he didn't get a Rachel. He was surprised with who? Leah, okay, I was just checking to see who went to Sunday school or not. And so he, he woke up with Leah, and then he, he served the father for, what was it, 14 years. And the father changed his wage 10 times. And he served him so long until it literally wore Jacob out. And in Genesis, the 31st chapter, I believe it is, around the second or third verse, the Lord speaks to him and he says, come back home. And I'm telling you on today, some of you have, have departed. As, as a result of, of, of the pandemic, as a result of, of, of somebody saying something wrong to you. You may be physically here, but in your heart, you've been driven out. See, it don't take much. It don't take much for, for you to leave a place. It don't take much for you to say, I'm only here as long as I have to be. What time is church over? 
because that's how wicked our heart is. But I'm here to let you know that Jesus came preaching peace. Peace between you and your spouse. Peace between you and your children. Peace between you and your boss. Peace between you and God. And he says unto today, be ye reconciled. Come on, stand to your feet.